for the most part, what you're seeing today is what Mina Miller Edison and Thomas Edison and Henry Ford and, you know, the big names of the 1920s would have walked through, would have seen, would have been sitting and enjoying at the same time. I'm Betsy Bergeson, Supervisor of Gardens and Landscapes here at beautiful Chautauqua Institution. I am standing down in the gardens surrounding the Miller Edison Cottage in Miller Park. These gardens have been restored based on the 1922 plans that were drawn up by Ellen Biddle Shipman. Ellen Biddle Shipman was a pioneer landscape architect back in the early 1900s and an inspiration to women everywhere, including myself. Imagine if you will, you are 40 years old in the early 1900s, three kids, a woman, and your husband has just left you. So back in the 1900s, you're a divorced woman in her 40s with no job raising three kids and trying to figure out what on earth to do. Ellen Biddle Shipman, like a phoenix, kind of rose from the ashes. She took what she knew and applied it and became one of the most successful landscape architects of her time. She was uh, not formally trained in garden design. She actually had her start just as a humble gardener. That's kind of what set her apart, honestly, is like the fact that she had a gardening background. Most of the, of the architects, the landscape architects at that time were males. They were into the hardscaping, knew how to design things, but didn't know the plants. And that's where Ellen Biddle Shipman really shone because she knew the plants, knew their characteristics, knew their habits, knew what they looked like. Ellen Biddle Shipman liked crescendos is what I think she called them where there'd be a crescendo just in, as in music you'd have something that would rise up so in the spring there's crescendos big masses of blooms of tulips and daffodils and then that would die out and another crescendo of color would come in and that's something that you know, I get goosebumps thinking about what this garden how this garden is has been transformed and really it's a way to connect the past to the present there are a few opportunities in a person's life that really are once in a lifetime, and this project happened to be that for me. So this whole restoration project really began in 2016. We came, uh, the house itself, the cottage, had been uh, bought and donated to the institution by a generous gift uh, in order to keep the historic landmark. And along with that, We've got the plans in our archives. When we started, we had these original 1922 plans with the plant lists that were here. And we looked through to see what plants were still within the garden. And whatever we could find that was there, we dug up and overwintered. The stones were all pulled up. The fountain behind me was restored. And then came the process of putting all the plants back into place. If we could put them back in their original locations, we did. And a great example of that happens to be the hosta and the jack in the pulpit, right up front and center in the main center garden here. That's kind of the showcase, the centerpiece. If you imagine uh, Thomas Edison and Mina Miller Edison having the Fords over here, having a little cup of tea and enjoying the quiet and the solitude. The initial round of plantings happened in the spring of 2019 with many more plantings to, to come. Uh, both this fall and next spring, we'll be putting in thousands of bulbs. So we have those crescendos of color in the spring. I believe the phrase goes, the first year it sleeps, the second year it creeps, and the third year it leaps. So by 2022, hopefully this garden will be leaping out leaping for joy and I invite you to come explore all the gardens and the grounds here at beautiful Chautauqua Institution and make sure you come and step back in time here at the Miller Edison Cottage to really enjoy the plantings that highlight a beautiful partnership between Mina Miller Edison and one of the earliest female landscape architects, Ellen Biddle Shipman. CHQ Assembly is made possible through the collaboration and innovation of Chautauqua Institution's full-time and part-time staff, seasonal staff, 
and many volunteers, as well as participants like you, whose engagement, gifts, and subscriptions sustain our mission.